we're going to start today using a reinforced mechanically fastened roof. In, this, in, in, in the instance of a mechanically fastened roofs, we can start with, we have four, seven, or 10 foot sheets. We only have a four foot sheet here today. Uh, in, in the mechanically fastened world, you've got half sheets and full sheets. Around the perimeter of a building, you would go with smaller sheets, therefore you literally install more fasteners. More fasteners give more wind uplift. In this case, we're gonna have a four foot sheet. It's mechanically fastened, four foot on center. And over here, what we call is a, a securement strip. Some manufacturers call it a RUS, which stands for Reinforced Universal Securement Strip. Other manufacturers call it RPF, Reinforced Perimeter Fastening Strip. That would be attached to the backside of the membrane, so we have a non-penetrating securement. Gives extra fastening around the perimeters. Around the perimeters of the roof, you want more fasteners to give you a higher wind uplift. Steve's just stirring up the primer. Uh, Gonna put her down. You can roll on primer on the reinforced sheets. They're they're pre-cleaned, so you can just roll on primer or scrub on the primer. Your choice. Different manufacturers offer different pieces of equipment. Scrub pads. Some guys use rags. Small three-inch roller. <coughs> Excuse me. He never measured. You have to let your primers flash off a little bit. Once they flash off, they're tacky to your touch. You can peel off the poly or the paper, uh, wax paper. You roll in the sheet. Is she ready? We're also going to be putting glues and primers on really thin today because we're indoors and we only have an hour to do the show. So what you see the guys installing glue on the roof should be thicker. That one's gonna be rolled up to the perimeter. On the perimeter, we also have another securement strip, six inch in this case. We'll do the same, we'll prime the back side of the EPDM. We'll put it onto the pressure sensitive tape on the securement strip. And then they'll proceed with putting on bond adhesives, which is a contact cement. Uh, all manufacturers have the old fashioned bond adhesives. We all have low VOC bond adhesives. You have to meet leads. Some, some, some jobs need uh, low VOC products. They're continually being changed. They're being, new ones are coming out all the time when they find new products that'll work for low VOC. Mechanically fasten the edge of the sheets, four, six and a half, seven or 10 foot sheets. That gets mechanically fastened depending on the height of the building, the wind zone, the wind speed warranty you're requesting or want. Six inch, nine inch, or 12 inches on center. Most, most jobs are 12 inches on center, depending on the deck, if you have a vapor barrier. While they're doing that, we can talk about vapor barriers. Here we're showing three different types of vapor barrier. There's all kinds of vapor barriers. There's craft paper, there's a poly, this one's a poly. Six mil is the normal, you can go up to about 10 mil. This is a pressure, pressure sensitive or peel and stick. Vapor barrier, asphalt in the, in, in the center. And this is a different type of uh, pressure sensitive peel and stick membrane. Some, uh, most times you put it on a thermal barrier, a drywall or a gypsum based product. That way it gives you a solid substrate. The one on the end there, that actually meets fire code to be installed directly onto a steel deck and it still meets fire code. Uh, different manufacturers have different vapor barriers. Insulations, all kinds of insulations out there. Uh, the majority of EPDM is done on either polyiso insulation or EPS, uh, expanded polystyrene. There's also ex extruded polystyrene. You can see the blue over here on the green roof, the blue insulation, that's the extruded polystyrene. You can, in, you can specify cover boards to go on top of the insulation, which helps the uh, strength of the roof system. Cover boards, usually quarter inch, half inch, five eighths, three quarter inch thick. 
come in a variety of different cover boards, uh, asphalt impregnated, asphalt coated fiber board, wood fiber board, high density wood fiber board. Uh, there's gypsum based, fiberglass reinforced. And we have, a, um, if you saw the previous presentation, we had a half inch poly ISO, which, which is nailed up against the parapets. Uh, it's about a 90 to 100 PSI. It's just a, a newer cover board came out a couple years ago. Two types of poly ISO. We have glass reinforced and non-organic. The glass reinforced helps with uh, moisture and mold. What Steve's doing now is a curb. We pre-wrap the curb to save time with EPDM. You secure around every, every EPDM system you have, you put securement around any angle change greater than 2 and 12. The, uh, you always want to hold your membrane up tight against the walls. The fasteners or a strip does that for you. So Steve's screwed around, fastened around the uh, curb. Now he's just priming. We've, we pre-wrap this with a pressure sensitive curb wrap. Todd and Kyle are uh, putting wrinkles in a wall. <laughs> we don't charge extra for wrinkles, guys. <laughs> they flash the bottom side of that reinforced membrane to the securement strip. They added, they put bonding adhesive on the back side of the rubber and onto the, the, the parapet. Flash the wall all in one sheet, no seams. In the old days, everybody's worried about seams, so if you get rid of the seams, you have less to worry about. That'll be flashed up and over the parapet, goes up the outside. Usually, you, there's a wood nailer up top, and they'll always want to cover the, your, your membrane covers beyond the wood nailer. Then they'll take some ring, tap, ring top nails, nail it off, temporarily holds it in place until your metal cap flashing goes on. You want it? Add more fasteners. Wrinkles are gone. Got the old guy to fix that, didn't they? <laughs> We're going to start roofing the fully adhered 90 mil black non reinforced EPDM, contact cement bonding adhesive. Spread it on the substrate and the back side of the membrane at 60 gallons per square feet finished surface. Five gallon cans should get about 300 square feet finished. If any of your inspectors you want to go see if make sure they're doing it the right thickness, you, you stand there, you wait till they finish gluing, and you count how many squares they've done. Steve is priming rust strip or RPF strip. These two membranes here, the membrane. The membrane they're working on is a reinforced, self-adhered EPDM. Uh, there's, there's newer technology out there. We've, we've now been working on uh, reinforced, self-adhered EPDM, and the one Kyle's sitting on is a non-reinforced, self-adhered EPDM. The only concern with that is temperature restrictions. It's usually 40 degrees Fahrenheit and rising. You don't want to do it in the cold because it, it, it just it won't, it won't set. Broom. Do you have a broom? Once the roof is stuck down to the substrate, Broom it in place, or you can use a roller. Uh, a lot of people have 100, 150 pound rollers, segmented rollers. Either system works well. Here, what they've done is they've just primed the same as they did before, except for the pressure sensitive reinforced securement strip will stick to the self adhered back on the TPO, or excuse me, the EPDM. Todd's still gluing. It's a little quicker to self-adhere it, as you can see. Essentially, these are both going to be the same roofs, except for one you're doing by hand with glues, and that's self-adhered, factory applied.
broom at 100%, get it stuck. So it's all contact cement, so as soon as you touch it, it is stuck. Fastening, in the case of this, there's different systems you can use for your insulation, your substrate. You can mechanically fasten it, you can, you can screw it down. Uh, different fastening patterns for different systems, FM requirements, wind uplifts. Uh, normally the minimum fasteners you'd want to go in a fully adhered is eight screws and plates per four by eight piece of insulation. There's also foams now, spray foams that you can use. You, you put it on beads, put it down in beads, four, six, 12 inches on center and you stick the foam, the insulation board into the foam. In the case of our roof, we didn't install any fasteners because it has to come up as soon as we're finished. Get ready for the next show. Now they're uh, gonna install the self-adhered EPDM non-reinforced, same way they did the reinforce, prime the backside of the reinforcement strip. And you always need a roofer fanning the roof to make sure it flashes off quicker. <laughs> Mother Nature again. Yeah, Mother Nature. Did you put it on thin? <laughs> he put it on thin and it's still taking a while to flash off. Smell that. Devin's working on the curb. The uh, primer's now flashed off, so he's ready to make the splice together, make it watertight. Once all those four uh, flanges are done on the curb, we get rolled, and then we'll put outside corners on it to seal it. We also have a lap sealant we seal all our edges on these roofs except for the uh, edges of the seams. We're not going to be using the caulking and stuff today just because of the mess. Rocco and Todd are now that the adhesive is flashed off. They're installing the uh, membrane into the glue, mostly. With the 90 mil, it makes it real easy. You can literally do 10 by 100. You glue 5 by 100. And a nice big open roof, you literally just grab the edge, flip it, and it folds itself in. It's so thick and robust. They've peeled it back, now they're just gonna repeat the same process. They're gonna glue the substrate in the back of the membrane with our bonding adhesive. Really, really thin. Is that against? Yes. Kyle and Steve are doing the, the non-reinforced SAT, sticking it up and over the parapets, all in one piece. No seams, no perimeter seams to work with or worry about. Good and thin.
Devin's got the tape off, or the poly off the tape, so now he has to roll those splices together, make them 100% watertight. The flange on the curb, it's got to be two or three inches wider than the uh, fastener and the plate. We always want two or three inches, minimum two, preferably three inches of water seal beyond the fastener and the plate. still gluing really thin <coughs> all the cans from all manufacturers they'll be labeled with an expiration date an expiry date or a date of manufacture. Most adhesives have nine to 12 month shelf life. The tapes have like a 12 month shelf life. It's something we always get the roofers to check before they, when they get the material delivered to site, make sure it's still within the, uh, it's not expired to use. The, exp the expiration dates are pretty conservative, but better to err on the side of caution. Steve and Kyle are almost done with the self-adhered. Rocco and Todd are getting a, their second section, their second half of the 90 mil mated. Devin's priming the curb where the outside corners have to be installed. Uh, different manufacturers have different shapes, thicknesses, sizes of outside corners. Most of us use pressure sensitive products now. Uh, Devin's using a seven by nine pressure sensitive, in this case, rectangular. Uh, other manufacturers have round ones with a gusset in the center. He's primed. You're blocking everybody. We'll move Devin so you can see what's happening. Prime the uh, EPDM getting ready to take the pressure sensitive products, which are the corners in this case. Steve in the far corner is working on the inside corner. There's different ways you can do an inside corner. In, the, in this case, Steve's going to be calling what we installing what we call a pig ear, which is just fold the membrane instead of having to cut it. You can just fold the membrane together into the shape of a pig ear, and then you adhere the pig ear to the wall. Maybe. Flashes over the top. There's different ways you can cut it so that you get a vertical seam as well. Pig ear, uh, usually on a 45 degree. Usually with smaller parapets, the guys just pig ear it. That way there's no holes or anything. You can go up, up to eight foot parapet.
Rocco and Todd are fans. <laughs> what Kyle's doing is he's marking the seam. He's getting ready to do our first splice or seam. Factory applied tape, six inch factory applied tape has already been installed on the reinforced membrane. So he's just marking out about a half an inch beyond so that when we fold it back, it exposes it. We know how much to prime, so we're not wasting the primer. We only go to, to the marks that t Kyle put down. Rocco's rolling the RPF or the rust strip, the securement strip around the perimeter, making sure it's mated properly, it was primed. Then they'll pull back the flaps of the EPDM. They'll glue back both sides again, the parapet and the back side of the EPM to flash it up and over the parapet. Steve's doing the same with his pig here on the inside corner, priming it, getting ready to put some tape on it. Where's your seam tape, Kyle? Once he gets the tape, uh, the, the seam area primed, in this case, we're going to field apply some three inch splice tape. Uh, a lot of manufacturers are now doing factory applied tape. Some specifiers are specifying it. Up to about a 30 foot wide sheet, we can put factory applied tape on so it comes right to the site already ready for you. When you're doing a splice or a seam, you come, one seam crosses another, you get a seam intersection. If you look at the shape, it's, it's the shape of a T. It's what we call a T patch. Every time we have one splice hit another splice, we install a T patch, which in this case is non-reinforced, uncured EPDM that's pressure sensitive. Six inch by six inch, 12 inch by 12 inch, depending on the specs and how long the warranty you want. Some manufacturers will make you do two tea, two tea patches, one on top of another, one three inches larger than the other. The longer the warranty, the more detailing we do. Uh, we, we basically tell the guys, if you want anything beyond a 25 year warranty, you double up all your details. Instead of putting one corner on, we'll put two corners on. Just Kyle's put the splice tape on the flashed off primer on the bottom of the sheet. Steve's now priming the top sheet, top of the sheet. Once that's flashed off, they'll close, they'll put it together, then they'll peel the poly off, roll the seam, and it's complete. Looks like Devin installed these corners. The outside corners have been installed. Same thing as the T-patch, same, same similar product. What you're always looking for in a corner is it's installed nice and tight to the angle change, no air bubbles, no bubbling. 
you want three or four inches minimum of seal from the outside corner in all directions. That gets rolled into all the tight, into all the crevices. Once it's all finished, put a lap sealant on it. We're not going to lap seal today just for the, because we have to tear it off as soon as we're done. Inside corner, Steve uh, installed the pig ear, flashed it to the wall, and then stripped it in with the same similar products that we had there, the pressure sensitive uncured EPDM. Primers flashed off on the splice. It's closed together. Devin's pulling the poly off. Then once all the poly's off, he's, as he's pulling the poly off, you're smoothing the splice to make sure you don't get what we call fish mouse, little wrinkles that go through the seams, which leak. Then Steve will roll it, two inch steel roller or two inch rubber roller. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ergonomic tools that are out there. You can stand up machines with rollers on them. Guys don't have to get down on their hands and knees as much as we used to in the old days. Rocco and Todd have installed the membrane, made it to the bottom of the securement strip. Now they just got to finish slashing their last wall, parapet. Where the seams hit the parapet in front of Steve here, whenever you have a, a, a splice hit a parapet, you want to install, similar to with a T patch, you want to install a patch there as well. What it does is it just reinforces where the splices go up the angle change. Uh, rubber has a memory, and it always wants to pull itself back to its original shape. So when you got that on a wall like that, it, want to pull, it wants to pull itself off. So what we do is we put a, a T patch like Kyle's doing there, same material, and it just holds it all together so that it doesn't open up. Some manufacturers will want to lap seal it on in the very bottom in the corner, and then roll, install the patch and then roll it. Others just need the outside of the patch cocked with lap sealant. That's a finished splice right there, what Kyle's just done there. Need to do that one first. In the case of the rubber Kyle's working on right now, that's uh, non-reinforced EPDM. In this case, we're going to do a ballasted roof, loose laid and ballasted. That system, you basically just steel deck, whatever, you've got wood deck. Steel deck, you install your vapor barrier, install your insulation. You put your membrane on top and you cover it in ballast. Inch and a half nominal, we call river wash ballast. You don't want sharp stone. If you can only get sharp stone, there's some parts of the country you can't get river wash stone. What we'll do is we'll put a blanket down first, uh, we, a geotextile polypropylene mat, woven mat, acts like a cushion, helps with the uh, crushed stone. Newfoundland, you can't get round river wash. You can only get large crushed stone. 
So every ballasted roof in Newfoundland has a blanket on it as well. Same thing, peel the poly, mate the surfaces, roll it, finish splice. Devin's coming behind to do the uh, cross seam. In this case, we have the factory applied tape so we don't have to field apply it. So you only got to prime the one side. Todd and Rocco has finished the uh, 90 mil fully adhered non-reinforced. Now they're going to start with our white EPDM. Same system, fully adhered, contact cement, two, two coats, except for it's a white EPDM. Comes in non-reinforced. Some manufacturers make 45. All manufacturers make a 60 mil white non-reinforced EPDM. Same system, they're gonna put the glue on really, really, really thin. <laughs> really thin. <laughs> The other guys here are finishing that six inch splice, factory applied splice that was uh, on the reinforced sheet. They're splicing onto the two fully adhered and the ballasted. Same system, prime. In this case, they don't have poly, it's got a wax paper. Same, same idea as the poly, just different. Uh, peel the wax paper. Roll it. We've got two more T patches here, so they will install T patches in this. Devin's install another outside corner on the curb. When it gets colder, the guys will take a, a hot air gun. We don't, we don't need the same air guns. If you watch the uh, TPO and the PVC demonstration earlier, they had the, the welders, the green Leicester welder over there. You don't need to use that. You can just use a, a hair dryer, something as simple. You just want to warm up the uncured mem membrane a little bit. Just makes it a little more pliable to work in the winter. Six by six T patch done for that first splice. Kyle's going to do a six by six T patch. Then he's going to install a twelve by twelve over top. Go ahead, stand away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Todd's a fan of PP Dan. <laughs> I will be in a second too. All right. Steve's going to finish off the uh, loose laid and ballasted section over there, over the securement strip, glue it up and over the parapets. I don't care. Membrane has flashed off, the, the adhesive has flashed off, ready to do the fully adhered. Devin's getting ready to do the mechanically fastened splice. Mechanically fastened splices with the, with the screws and plates need to be wider than a regular three inch splice, minimum six inches. You want, we said earlier, you want two inches of splice tape beyond the, each side of the fastener. She asked if uh, why we're doing the two-sided. It is exactly that. It's a contact cement. We're, on, we're putting it on thin today because we're indoors. That's the only reason. Normally, we'd be two or three times as thick of that just because of the time we have for today. Because normally, what they'll do is they'll do five by 100 feet. They'll just keep gluing and gluing and gluing, and then other guys will come in behind. But today, for the time we, all, we, we were allotted. No. Normal insulation at least three times that thick. You hear that noise he's doing? You don't want to hear that on a roof. That means you're going too thin. There's also some adhesives out there now that are just one coat coverage. You put it on thick and then you roll the membrane into the, to the adhesive. You don't need to do a contact cement. It's just, it's, it's made for one, one step coverage. Yeah. Help. Help. Devin's getting the primer <coughs> for the uh, mechanically fastened splice. You've got your T patches at the angle changes, at the T joints. There's one not done there. Double T patch here. This would be good for a 25 and a 30 year warranty. That would be good up to a 20 year warranty. Curbs all finished. Flashed all four corners. No bridging. The 90 mil fully adhered, they're all standing on that, had factory applied tape, six inch, 
So, so we only have to prime the one side similar to what we did earlier here. You can cut it there if you want. Kyle's doing here is what we call a prefabricated pipe seal. Uh, all manufacturers have prefabricated ones. They're like a wedding cake design. They start at the top about a half inch diameter hole, one inch down to six inches. What do we got? Six, five, four, three. In this case, it's a three inch pipe. So Kyle prefitted earlier to save time. We cut it off at three inches. You slip that over. Are you going to invert it? It comes with a pressure sensitive tape on it, same with all the other factory applied. Fit it on, prime it, get it ready. For the finished product, once this has been stuck down to the roof, you put a, a, a caulking inside. Some manufacturers call it water cutoff mastic, others call it a water block. It's a real technical term is gooey mastic. Uh, it, never, it, never, it never hardens up, it stays gooey forever. Once that's inside the top of the uh, pipe seal, you install a stainless steel screw type clamping ring, tighten it up. Some guys will put lap sealing on the top to help shed that edge. You'll be watertight forever. Some manufacturers have the poly on their tape. Other manufacturers have the wax paper. Both do the same thing. Kyle's not used to doing paper. Primer splashed off from the guys working on the seams. Same thing as uh, earlier, these splices that I'm standing on. Peel the poly, mate, mate, it by, mate your surfaces by hand, and then roll it. That's a completed splice. In the case of the white EPDM, it had white factory applied tape used. All manufacturers have white tapes, white pipe seals, white corners, white lap sealant, white, uh, white uncured membrane. We're on a roof now where they've, uh, they're doing a ballasted roof. So they're doing the bottom of the roof, black membrane ballasted, but they wanted to see white. So they're doing the parapets and all the curbs and all the pipes and everything in a white EPDM. So what, what the people can see is going to be white. The application for each different system. Ballasted roof system is probably your most economical one. You get on the big warehouses and boxes. The guys can install, we've had some roofers actually install 100,000 square feet of roof complete in a day. Not the ballast, but the roof. Um, the problem that comes is the weight. You have to go with a minimum of 10 pounds a square foot of ballast. Uh, the roof is lightweight. The membrane is only about a third of a pound a square foot for 60 gauge. The insulation is a couple pounds a board. So a ballasted roof minimum is around 12 pounds a square foot. So you have to build the structure for 12 pounds plus your live loads, your snow loads. <clears throat> the other systems, mechanically fastened, 
comes in, depending on how thick your insulation, two pounds a square foot, one and a half pounds a square foot. It's good for retrofitting or going over top of an existing roof. If, you're, if your old roof isn't soaked or damaged or destroyed below, you could, you, you could go over top. It's lightweight, costs more money. Reinforced mem mem uh, membrane costs more than non-reinforced. And fully adhered is just it's a high wind resistance, lightweight, go right over top your old roof. All right. One of the requirements of all manufacturers is to help protect the roof. Wherever you have a uh, roof hatch, uh, a roof door, an access, anything with permanent access, we want to protect the roof. We have uh, walkway pads. These are uh, pre-taped. So all we got to do is prime the back of the, prime the membrane, stick the tape into it. You've got a 30 inch by 30 inch walkway pad. They come in black or white. Uh, a lot of places will use concrete pavers and they'll put the concrete pavers on the extruded polystyrene. Wherever you have a hatch, a door, top and bottom of a ladder, when all the trades come out of the hatch, the first thing they do with their toolbox is drop it on the roof. If that's there, it protects your roof. We are almost done. Splices is complete. T patches are done. Do we have white? Steve is now going to ballast the roof, we were talking about earlier. Inch and a half nominal, uh, sometimes in higher wind zones or if you want a higher, higher mile per hour warranty, what they'll do is they'll come up with a design and you might go with two and a half inch or three and a half inch nominal stone. And sometimes you'll put extra stones in the corners or patio stones in the corners, concrete pavers. That helps with the wind resistance. The corner of a roof, you get wind blowing on it could blow your ballast around. So we always ask the building owners to go up every year and make sure that the wind's not blowing off the corners of your building. If it is, you go up there, you put some patio stones down, that'll help. What we like to see is it what they call shoulder to shoulder, basically each, each piece touching. That right there is literally up to probably 10 pounds a square foot. Ish? 9.7. This is finished. We put the caulking inside, the water cutoff or the water block. Finish it with a stainless steel screw type clamping ring. Stick that up wet, Todd. <laughs> Everything is done except for that last white splice, which will be done in the next one minute. How do I find a leak? I call up one of our authorized applicators and say, go find the leak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you search. You find out where it's wet. You go below. You look for it. You find out where it's wet. And a lot of times you'll go up there and you start at that area and you just keep working. If you got a wet spot, like I was on one the other day, we just kept cutting until we could find it's a pain. Guys get good at it. I'm not good at finding leaks. I just get frustrated, so. Uh, there's other guys I've seen cut holes in the rubber. They'll put a shop vac in reverse. They'll put, cover the roof in water. They'll blow the vacuum underneath. All the air gets underneath the rubber. If they see bubbles coming up, they know there's a hole. If, they, if they're suspecting there's a hole in the roof. 
Ballast helps protect the roof a lot. Yeah. Yeah. White, white splice is completed. Kyle's just putting on a T-patch with a white uncured membrane. Primer, T-patch, lap seal. Only thing missed, we didn't do the inside corner or the blowout patch there over in that corner. And that's basically it for EPDM. Any questions, we're here. We're going to be tearing it off. Thank you all for attending.